All right, so in this problem, we are given the task of finding the moment of inertia of a more complicated section, right? So this section here is the composite section. We have plates on the top, plates on the bottom, a plate in the middle, and this is not a section that's defined in the AIC shapes database. So we have to go and calculate the moment of inertia in order to find our maximum bending stress. So like previous problem, we were given a, a beam loading and a shear moment diagram. We know that the moment at this location the maximum moment that we have to deal with is 36.125 kip feet. So we also know that in this case, right, C is going to be easy. So it, for this one, the maximum moment, we found it from a shear moment diagram. C in this case is going to be easy because this section is symmetric about the principal axis. Whenever a section is symmetrical about the principal x, x axis, the distance C to the maximum bending stress is always going to be the height divided by two. So I wrote that out over here. This distance from the principal axis to the top is going to, just going to be the height over two or six inches. And I'll see, even write that here. Due to symmetry, C is just gonna equal the height over two, 12 inches over two, which is six inches, right? The height over two. So we found C. So the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and find the moment of inertia. And specifically what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna demonstrate the use of the parallel axis theorem. We can go through this thing and we could take the area, you know, defined, or I'm sorry, the moment of inertia defined by this 12 by 12 box and subtract out these voids. Right, but that wouldn't be as much fun. So what I want to do here is, uh, is I want to show you how to use the parallel axis theorem. That's the whole point of this video, to help you to learn. So to do that, I've made another diagram down here below. It's a little bit bigger, you know, blow this thing up a little bit. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to rewrite that, that parallel axis theorem. So the parallel axis theorem says the moment of inertia of the composite shape is equal to the sum of the individual moments of inertia of, the, of different sections plus the area times the distance from the, the principal axis squared. So we add all those up, we get an answer, and we should be good, right? So what I want to do here is I want to, you know, this summation basically allows me to some simple parts or moments of inertia for simple parts and add them all up. But if I'm gonna do that, I also have to add in this AD squared term. So what I like to do is I like to first go ahead and label parts. So uh, specifically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this top rectangle. So you, if, you, we, if we were to cut this thing off right here, you know, cut this thing off right here, we have a top rectangle, we have a middle rectangle, and we have a bottom rectangle. So I'm just gonna label them one, two, and three. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make a table. This works really, really well with a table. I'd highly recommend use a table. But all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna write the part. You know, so we have part one, part two, and part three. And then I'm just gonna keep working on each of these terms. So I'm gonna start with I naught. So I naught is the moment of inertia about the member's individual principal axis. So in this case, if we look at member one, what do we have? We have a center of gravity of that member right in the middle of that member. Similarly, if we look at member two, we have a center of gravity right in the middle of that member. Member three, center of gravity right in the middle of the member. However, the composite center of gravity, we can't forget this, the composite center of gravity is gonna be in the middle of the entire member. Okay, so this composite is gonna be right in the middle down here. Okay, what we wanna use for this I naught is the individual components center of gravity. So in this case, we have an equation for a rectangle. We know that the moment of inertia of a rectangle, Ix equals bh cubed, and that's about the sections individual you know principal axis this sections x x axis so what we want to do is we want to take this part one and just go ahead and solve it so for part one what we're going to say is the base of part one is 12 inches wide so that's the base is 12 inches the height of part one is one inch so one inch cubed over 12 and when we do that out hopefully you can do the math in here in your head but the 12 is cancel out we just get one cubed and that's going to be one inch to the fourth right so the inches don't cancel out so part two a little bit different but not crazy different right the base in this case we're still going to have a base of one inch here the height is going to be uh, now this height is going to be 10 inches. So we're going to go all the way up from here to here and, and not include these flanges. So that's going to be 10 inches cubed 
divided by 12, right? And, and I should note that the base here is always the, the horizontal distance or always the distance lined up with the principal axis. So in this case, the base for part one was 12. The base for this middle one is, is just one because that's the, the horizontal distance in line with, with, part, or with the principal axis x. And when we do this out, this is a little bit more complicated. And you, you know, if you use your calculator, you get 83.33. Uh, inches to the fourth, okay? Uh, the, the bottom is gonna be the same as the top, right? We have a base of 12, a height of one, and we can write that out. And we can cross out the 12s, and likewise, we're gonna get this equals to one inches to the fourth, okay? So we have our I naught term, but now we have to do our A and our D in 80 squared term. So let's put a column uh, in the table for that. So our A term, right, what do we have? Well, A, is just going to be uh, the area, right? The area is pretty, pretty straightforward. The area of part one is going to be this 12 times one, or 12 inches times one inch. That's just going to be 12 square inches. Okay. The area of two, we're going to have one inch times 10 inch, one inch times 10 inch, and that's just going to be 10 square inches. And then the bottom is just like the top. So we have the 12 inches by one inch, and that's going to be 12 square inches. The next thing that we want to do here is we want to look at our D term. And D is, is an interesting term. D is the distance from the overall principal axis to the individual component principal axis. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to draw in some dimensions on this side to show that, right? And here, let me first draw a line in. And the first line that I'm going to draw here is just a line that goes from you know this principal axis out to uh, the point you know over here that's perpendicular, and, and that's going to be kind of a reference point. But the distance again, uh, well actually let's just start there. The distance for part two is going to be zero. Why? Because this distance of the individual component and the overall neutral axis is zero. There is no change in distance, right? But the distance for part one and part three is a little bit different. So I'm gonna draw some more lines for that. And these lines are gonna go you know, from essentially the individual component neutral axis out to the edge here. And let me do the same for the bottom. Right, and that line goes from the individual component neutral axis out to the side. So when we find this distance, well, it's gonna be essentially 10 over two plus one over two. So this distance here is gonna be 5.5 .5 inches. And I'm just gonna label that D1, right? That's the D or this distance from the overall principal axis to the principal axis of the component. So I, once I know that, I can write it in, but this is just 5.5 .5 inches. Okay, and similarly, you know, D3 down here, is going to be 5.5 .5 inches. And I'm not so worried about whether it's positive or negative, uh, partly because when we're all done, we're gonna square that term anyway, so it's not gonna make a difference. Okay, so we have our D term, and then what we can do is basically, I like to just draw this in here, where we have AD squared, just a way to do the math. And when we do that out, we get 12 times 5.5 .5 squared, which is 300, 63 inches to the fourth. And you'll notice 363 inches to the fourth is huge. It's much bigger than our one. It's much bigger than even this 83.3. It's really gonna dominate. And maybe that is an indication why when we do wide flange beams or we use wide flange beams, you know, they have all this steel away from the neutral axis, away from the middle. It's because it really makes a big difference on the stiffness of this thing. So right now when we do 10 times zero, that's gonna be zero inches to the fourth. And lastly, the bottom one, you know, it's gonna be the same as the top, 363 inches to the fourth. Now when I come back up and I solve, I'm, I like to separate these out and I'm just gonna sum each of these individually. So sum of I naught is just gonna be the sum of all these pieces, which is gonna be 85.3 inches to the fourth. And similarly, the sum of 80 squared is gonna be the sum of each of these and 363 plus 363 is gonna be 726 inches to the fourth. And what we're gonna to do to solve for Ix is we're just gonna add these together, right? Add these two terms, the sum of I naught plus the sum of 80 squared together. So what that looks like is we get, well, Ix equals 85.3 inches to the fourth plus 726 inches to the fourth. And Ix equals, right, equals 
811.3 inches to the fourth. And you'll see that this term, right, this I, this AD squared term really drives the equation, okay? So once we know that, let's come back up and look what our problem has, right? What we know is we've gone ahead and we've solved for our moment of inertia, right? That's cool, we can check it off now. And what we wanna do here next is we wanna go ahead and solve for our bending stress. And our bending stress is gonna be MC over I, right? This is our bending stress. And when we substitute in, we take our moment, which comes from our moment diagram of 36.125 kip feet. We multiply that by 12 to get it into kip inches. We then are gonna multiply it by our C dimension, which is six inches. Divide it all by our moment of inertia, which we came up with 811.3 inches to the fourth. And when we're all done, we when we calculate this and put it into our calculator, we get a bending stress of 3.2 kips per square inch or KSI. All right, so there we have it. We found our bending stress. We found the max moment uh, from our moment diagram. We found C, and in this case, due to symmetry, it was just H over two. And we found the moment of inertia using the parallel axis theorem. And then we found the bending stress. Hey, I hope this helps. You know, if it does, feel free to click like. And otherwise, keep working hard and moving onward and upward.